At number 10, we have our forced marriage with Will Smith. Now, agree or disagree, but Jada herself has declared she got married unwillingly, and here's why. Much like everything else, Jada has openly discussed never wanting to initially marry Will, and because of this, a lot of people have made claims that Jada was wed under duress. However, Jada chalked it up to a far more reasonable explanation, and this was her being young and pregnant at the time. It's been stated how Jada's mother pushed her to tie the knot because she was fearful that Jada would never have the opportunity to get married if she didn't make that decision. Despite Jada's disapproval, the wedding still happened, and she never wanted a traditional marriage, but had to compromise for Will's sake. She was going through various emotions at her three month turn mark, and even cried while going down the aisle because she was so angry with the idea of getting married. Not only was Jada a gangster marriage in general, she also disapproved of Will's luxurious lifestyle, and it's been detailed by sources that she was genuinely upset with Will when he bought their grand family home. If one didn't know any better, you could say their entire relationship seems forced at this point, but that's just a conspiracy theory and quite frankly, none of my business. At number 9, we have Jada being a huge attention seeker. Now this one is more of an observational theory rather than hard facts, but have you ever noticed how overly expressive she becomes when speaking about really personal things, or how often she tries to shift the attention onto herself when it's really not about her? Well, maybe not, but according to multiple sources, this is exactly how Jada is, and they've used how she describes love to be one of their reasonings. Jada once said, the older she becomes, the more she's discovering what love truly is. Now there really isn't any harm in that statement, right? Maybe not. But it does say a lot about one's character when they've single handedly used their deceased ex lover and friend as a scapegoat for attention when they fall short. At least, this is what those sources are saying about Jada. And that's putting it nicely. She's been described as somebody who drags Tupac's name through interviews at any given chance, where a lot of the times her late ex isn't even the topic of discussion. And Jada would just randomly mention him whenever she felt there was no spotlight on her. Again, this is more speculation, but why else would she continuously bring up someone she was close to who passed? away. Wouldn't it hurt more to talk about them 24 7 rather than rarely or not at all? It's also been revealed that Jada got super pissed at Will at her 40th birthday party, which Will had been planning for 3 years prior. He surprised her with a documentary he commissioned that chronicled her life. One would think this gesture of appreciation would work out in Will's favor, but it didn't. Jada and Will had it out after the party, and the incident was said to have popped off in their hotel when Will was reportedly shouted at and told that the event was one of the most disgusting displays of ego Jada had ever seen in her life. Life. As a result, she and Will separated, as Will told her he was retiring from making her happy. I mean, that's one sure way to suck all the good vibes out of the room. At number 8, we have Jada's manipulation tactics. Now this is a big one. Because of everything I looked into regarding Jada, the word manipulation came up a scary amount of times. Reasons why she's been referred to as such range from a multitude of things, many of which have to do with her husband. There's Jada's lack of reassurance to Will of her and Tupac's actual relationship at the time, to her claims that she and Tupac only kissed once and that there was nothing more there. But it was apparent Tupac had feelings for Jada. Yet Jada's own description of their relationship was quote weird. Jada no doubt strung Will along by being manipulative once she and Will started dating by casually trying to play off her situation with Tupac. In doing this, she had both their support and attention, hence the manipulation tactic. Jada used this excuse of not defining her relationship openly as an advantage for herself. With both of them by her side, the situation was manipulated to the point where no one could speculate any wrongdoing from her. While she still got what she wanted in the end. Some even say that Jada forced Will to transition to an open marriage down the road as another manipulation tactic for her being forced to marry him originally. Number 7. The Doja Cat Photo At the Billboard Music Awards, Cara Delevingne and Megan Thee Stallion were seated next to each other and Doja Cat was seated in the front row in front of them. Several clips of the moment went viral on Twitter as fans pointed out that it looked like Megan and Doja were trying to have a conversation with one another but Cara was constantly interrupting. The whole night was crazy. Whether she was literally on the floor trying to take photos of Doja or sticking her tongue out at Megan, her inappropriate antics eventually led people to accuse the model of fetishizing black women. You might think that's a bit of a reach, but Megan definitely seemed uncomfortable with that kind of attention on her, and even posted a photo to Instagram of her and Doja next to each other with Kara photoshopped out of the picture. It wasn't exactly subtle because everyone saw the original version of the photo, which shows that Kara was actually sitting between them at the time. Number 6. Amber Heard Affair The 2022 defamation trial between between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard was really quite explosive, and it exposed a number of shocking revelations about both parties. But something that really
really caught everyone's attention was a leaked deposition that went viral online during the trial, which suggested that Kara was involved in a three-way affair between Amber and her billionaire ex-boyfriend Elon Musk. The video featured a key witness in Josh Drew, who was married to one of Amber's friends at the time, who said that to his knowledge, Amber heard Elon Musk and Cara Delvine spent the night together. The three of them reportedly hooked up at Johnny's downtown LA penthouse in late 2016, after somewhere around the time that he and Amber split up. But there was speculation, just like with James Franco, that Amber was seeing Cara and Elon while she was still with Johnny. In the end, the supermodel did not have to testify in the trial, but for a period of time, it certainly seemed like she was going to get pulled into the legal battle. Number five, Coachella. Beyonce's culture-shaking performance at the 2018 Coachella Music Festival became so iconic that it was literally called Beychella. Like everyone else, Cara was a huge fan of the show and had nothing but good things to say. She wrote on Instagram, I am speechless. That performance made me burst into tears and sent shivers down my spine. But her followers were not too happy with that and accused her of hypocrisy because before the event, Cara was one of the loudest voices supporting the No Cella movement, which was a boycott of the festival after the owner was caught making donations to anti-LGBTQ plus causes. As the backlash against her started escalating, she hit back at critics on Instagram saying, I am allowed to shame that man and show my appreciation of an artist at the same time. I still refuse to go to a festival that is owned by someone who is anti-LGBTQ plus and pro -gun. But her followers certainly didn't see it that way and a messy debate took place in her comment section. Number four, the Jimmy Choo ad. In 2017, the Me Too movement was gaining some real momentum, largely due to Harvey Weinstein being exposed as a serial predator. Cara Delvin was one of the women who came forward with her own disturbing allegations about him that same year and revealed on Instagram that Harvey had convinced her to follow him to his hotel room and tried to kiss her before she managed to escape. But even though Cara was brave enough to speak up against sexual harassment, it somehow backfired on her when she decided to star in an ad for Jimmy Choo called Shimmer in the Dark. The short film shows her walking around New York City at night drawing attention from several men on the street who then start catcalling her and complimenting her. But the attention that she gets is framed as a good thing and that's what really seemed to anger people as they pointed to the hypocrisy of it all. Even though most of the backlash was directed at Kara, Jimmy Choo eventually decided to pull the ad as it was deemed too controversial. At number three, we have Jada's infidelity. Of course, she was not aligned by her entanglement with August Alsina, especially because he was her son's friend and most likely vulnerable at the time. Plus, her messy affair with the R&B singer was later revealed by Will to have occurred after he and Jada were already separate. Despite this, Jada admitted to this affair of cheating when she and Will were not together but still married. But how she went about it was weird given what Will confirmed. She first made claims that Will gave his blessing for their affair but the internet did not agree. It wasn't until Will publicly stepped forward to admit that Jada wasn't the only one being unfaithful that social media decided to ease up, though not by much. Still, people think Will's admission was a way to save face but also to touch back on the rumors surrounding him and his Focus co-star Margot Robbie engaging in an affair of their own. Will's admission that he didn't give Jada permission to date because they weren't even together means their words, stories, and sides just aren't adding up. Regardless, Will says nothing Jada will do can ever change things for them now that they're open because these were the terms they came to from the jump. Will and Jada are no longer described as married but as life partners instead. It's been detailed that Will may just be playing Jada's game because he doesn't want to lose her for good. At number two, we have one of Hollywood's biggest drama queens. Well, Maybe that's a bit of a stretch here, but Jada is known for being one for the dramatics, and that's been noted because of her household full of drama. However, it's also been detailed that both Will and Jada are equally responsible for the drama that occurs in their home. Still, with all of Jada's major backlash every time she speaks, and being labeled as messy and difficult due to her outing intimate details of her relationship to the public, with no real remorse for Will's feelings, it's safe to say that the majority of the public is leaning on the side of Jada being the chaos enabler. At number one, we have Jada's lack of boundaries. This one is a no-brainer, I'm sure, because we all know Jada has a tendency to air it all out, whether it's intentional or not. Jada has been described as someone who overshares too much to the public, and this severely impacts her family. She's not very private about anything, which shows there are no boundaries in her relationships overall. In particular, she has no respect for Will by exposing everything about their relationship, which is just tasteless. And before you say this is unfair, we literally know everything we do know 
all about them now because of Jada. She was the one who admitted to infidelity, which really should have been something Will was warned about before it went public, since Will was clearly caught off guard by the news of August telling the world he gave them permission. She was also the one talking openly about her intimacy once while her mother was present. Jada also constantly speaks so horribly about her marriage in general, so I'm sure you get the point now. Number 10. Culturally insensitive. In 2016, Hawaiians were demanding an apology from Jennifer Lawrence after she joked about scratching her butt on rocks that are considered sacred to the natives on the island. When the actress appeared on Graham Norton's show with Chris Pratt on December 2nd of 2016, she explained that she actually almost injured a crew member while the incident was occurring. She went on to say that these rocks are sacred. I don't know if they were ancestors, who knows, but they were sacred. Jennifer was only able to sit on the rocks because she was wearing a wetsuit. She then went on to joke about the rocks were good for butt itching and that one rock she was scratching against ended up coming loose and almost seriously injuring the sound guy on set. What made matters worse is Jennifer laughed about the fact Hawaiians were horrified about the incident and that they were going on about a curse when it was actually just her who knocked over the rock. In Hawaii, removing any black sand or lava rocks is thought to be a bad luck caused by the peels curse. That's why the removal of rocks for souvenirs is considered taboo to their culture. Jennifer later apologized for the incident by saying she meant absolutely no disrespect about the fact and that she understands the way it was perceived was not funny and apologizes if she offended anyone. If we can learn anything about Jennifer's incident, it's just to leave sacred items alone. Number nine transphobic. In November 2012, Jennifer appeared on Ellen to promote the Silver Linings playbook film and made some pretty serious comments that many said came across transphobic. Jennifer told Ellen that she had this cat and that she never met a cat where you assume at first it's a boy because cats are girls and dogs are boys. The star went on to note that her cat had this huge masculine energy and for the first week of having her, everyone referred to her cat as he. Ultimately, the star decided to call her cat Oliver and brought her cat a collar with the name Oliver written on it. She then thought the name was not right and changed her cat's name to Chaz Bono. This started a huge outrage with fans because if you don't know who Chaz Bono is, he's a transgender male. Fans also pointed out that the whole comment was outrageous and transphobic. What may have been a joke to Lawrence was definitely not funny and extremely offensive to the LGBT community. Throughout the show, you could tell Ellen was really uncomfortable with the subject and after Jennifer was done speaking, Ellen tried to gently educate the artist by saying, well, you know, multicolor cats are females before quickly changing the subject. Number eight. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan has had a pretty easy target over the last decade. However, the jokes have gotten pretty cliche. So when Jennifer made a joke about the actress in December of 2015, while appearing on the late night show with Stephen Colbert, the joke fell a bit flat. She told Colbert that she gets Lindsay Lohan's great exhaustion, but without the substance abuse. Lohan's sister quickly came to her sister's side to defend her after the show aired by saying, I never breathe life into to negativity, but I stand by my family. Disappointed in Jennifer Lawrence, you lost a fan. Lindsay responded to her sister by pretty much saying, you can do anything to her, however, at the end of the day, she will rise and overcome any obstacle. Lindsay thanked her sister and threw some shade at Lawrence by saying, maybe whoever you're referring to should learn to support others like Maya Angelou. Even Diana Lohan came to say that the family loved Jennifer Lawrence and it was extremely extremely unfortunate that she would use Lindsay's name to refer to not showing up on a set. And it's very difficult to see that Jennifer didn't have her peers back and that no matter who you are, you shouldn't trash anyone. At number seven, we have all the toxic energy which seems to surround Jada. I mean, seriously, get this girl some sage or something because I'm positive many people will mutually agree with me. And the craziest part, there's lots of proof to back up the theory that Jada is just straight up toxic. One example is her IG post with her and Will's marriage counselor. Now there are a few things to get into from this one video, but to keep things short and sweet, Jada 
started rolling without even asking Will if he was ready. This raised a lot of concerns about how their marriage operates behind closed doors. Jada also called Will foolish and constantly made it seem as if his opinions were invalid during this. So despite many people thinking Jada is great, there are a whole lot more who feel she is one of the most toxic, foul Hollywood celebs out there, with good reason. There's also the accusation that Jada was behind Willow's letter to Tupac post, which randomly arose on Instagram and was deleted shortly after. The moral of the point here is that Jada knows she can do whatever she wants without repercussions, and Will will always be by her side to fight. So she'll never leave or actually change her ways, and to me, that's toxic AF. If you ask anybody, people say Jada's overall attitude towards Will is actually because he was never anything more to her than a rebound. But we'll get into that in just a minute. At number six, we have Jada's responsibility for her polygamous marriage. Will and Jada are currently in what we call an open relationship, which basically just means they're free to see and be with whoever they please but can't leave each other. Will stepped forward to disclose multiple times that he and Jada's marriage for them cannot feel like a prison. And this stemmed from rumors of Jada engaging in an affair with her Hawthorne castmate, Mark Anthony, who was married to Jennifer Lopez at the time of their then unconfirmed incident. Jada's inappropriate affairs, despite not being full blown, were said to be the cause of her and Will's marriage being forced open. Basically, so Jada could mess around with other people without catching any of the blame or downfall. So long as Will agreed, of course. Which he did, by the way. And this may just be related to his previous statement of him saying he and Jada simply cannot get divorced. At number five, we have the whole Future IG story mess, where Future made comments on Will and Jada's marriage after Jada opened up about intimacy on one of her Red Table talks to explain how a partner should know what she wants in the bedroom. Future first got involved after online memes started circulating about Will needing to hang out with him, who has a reputation for being involved with multiple women all the time which implied that Will should learn to be more like Future in that sense. During her RTT, Jada described her partner's need to love her enough to know every part of her, which netizens thought implied Will didn't love her the way she was demanding. Twitter users also took her statements literally, which in turn sparked the whole debate of whether or not she embarrassed Will by saying she'd really bring Future to the red table. Charlemagne the God even questioned on his show once if Will was ever jealous of Jada and Tupac's relationship, where Will speaks about being insecure because of their tight bond. At number Number 4, we have Jada and her top level narcissism. A user on Quora once described Jada as a histronic borderline narcissist, and their opinion on it in short is that Jada provokes Will's touch of feminism nature to bruise his ego. This user even explained why they feel Will has narcissistic tendencies and may even be one himself. They said, when you are involved with a highly narcissistic person, your mind is not your own. Jada said to Will, we're ride or die, bad marriage till the end. I knew then they're both narcs. Will's masculinity suffered a narcissistic injury when Jada had a fling with a troubled young musician, a friend of her kid. Then Will went on Red Table to discuss it and she emasculated him. Will was triggered in the beginning by her obsession with Tupac. He took all of it out on Chris Rock when Jada gave him that look that triggered him to slap Chris. Chris was an easier target, that's my theory. Now, if we reel back to the public sharing of Willow's letter to Tupac, it made people feel like Jada was super self-absorbed for exploiting her daughter for her own selfish reasons. One YouTuber even commented on a video regarding Jada's behavior with the following, this woman somehow thinks she's a higher power, just out there healing the world, while realistically destroying all those close to her like narcissists do. Big yikes. Three, she lies a lot. While trying to be relatable, Jennifer has a really hard time telling the truth. For an example, she once told a story on Late Night with Seth Meyers about how she vomited at Madonna's 2014 Oscar party and Miley Cyrus had to tell her to get it together. While some amused to know if the statement was true, Miley shortly tweeted that the incident was not true and it never happened. And this wouldn't be the first time Jennifer has gone on to use another celebrity's name to create a fictionalized story. Story. Because she also claimed to have followed John Stamos around a party and she really freaked out because she was a huge fan. She then went on to tell late nice host Cohen Brian that he offered her a substance and she said no. However, when the full house star was later asked about the incident, he was shocked and tweeted that it was a complete lie, proving that Lawrence can't be trusted when it comes to her speaking about other celebrities. Number two. Her falls are fake. In 2013, when the star tripped on her way up the stairs to accept her Oscar, the fall to many of us was endearing and adorable. However, it just kept happening. In 2015 at the Oscars, she fell on the red carpet, making even Jared Leto question if the incidents were all just an act. 
And then came the evidence to prove his theory correct. For Lawrence's part, she may be thinking she's doing the right thing when asked about her deliberate falls and clumsiness. Jennifer told Marie Claire that she just was trying to do the right thing, waving to her fans. The star went on to say, all of a sudden, there was a traffic cone. The second I hit it, I was laughing, but on the inside, I was like, oops. They're totally going to think it was an act. She then noted that even if she was Jared Leto, she would completely agree with the fact that she was faking the falls. It's definitely something we should keep an eye on because even though the star went on to say she would have never done it at the Oscar twice in a row, I think that's exactly what she would have done. Number one, political views. For years, it took Jennifer to feel comfortable about sharing her thoughts on political matters. However, over time, she's gotten used to speaking her mind about everything from pay equity and who should be the president of the United States. However, her comments to Trump prove that it's best to keep quiet when it comes to political opinions. With Trump winning the 2016 election, Lawrence was left heartbroken and didn't hold anything back. And her whole ordeal to follow had her saying some pretty serious comments. In 2016, she even told Graham Norton one time she was at the same concert with Trump and she even wanted to go up to him and give him a piece of her mind. And then in 2017, she told Oprah that she already had planned out what she would say to former president of the United States if she had the chance to meet him. And it wasn't nice and her actions that would have followed wouldn't have been so nice either. Many would would go on to accuse Lawrence of taking her criticism too far, but this didn't scare the actress into staying quiet as post-election later, she would tell fans not to be afraid to be loud and heard. Number 10, Billboard Music Awards. At the Billboard Music Awards in May, Cara Delevingne stole the show and captured everyone's attention with her erratic behavior and apparent obsession with Megan Thee Stallion. Several of the model's antics ended up going viral following the show, including her peering around a corner and licking her lips while staring at Megan as she posed for the photographers, which I guess was Kara's idea of a joke. Kara could be seen repeatedly lurking around the rapper, ducking in and out of the shot while sticking her tongue out and shouting. The photos took Twitter by storm with one user writing, your chances of being watched by Kara Delvine are slim but never zero. Eventually she ran onto the red carpet and grabbed the train of Megan's dress to give the photos some added movement. Some people believe that Megan looked irritated by it all. Not only that, but video footage from a party resurfaced online which showed Kara attempting to kiss Megan while they were on the dance floor and Megan literally had to grab her shoulders and hold her back. If you're loving this video so far, please hit that like button, it would really help us out. Number 9, Licking Azalea Banks Not too long ago, a video went viral of the model attempting to lick the rapper Azalea Banks while she was performing her hit track 212 at Leah McSweeney's Halloween party last year. The video was pretty telling because you could see that Azalea got to the end of her song and Kara was literally on her knees in front of her with her tongue out, working her way up the rapper's leg until she was standing alongside the musician. Yes, she seemed like she was licking the entire length of her body. But it's only weird if Azalea says so, and the rapper apparently didn't seem to mind, and responded to the video on Twitter, saying that Kara is her girl through and through. Quote, There were plenty of times I would just hide Kara in my apartment for days at a time to make sure she got some deep sleep and some actual food, and wasn't just thrown out amongst the wolves like that. Well, it seems like the nature of their relationship is super ambiguous, but obviously there's a lot of love there. Number 8, Peg the Patriarchy. In 2021, Kara attended the Met Gala wearing a white bulletproof vest with the words Peg the Patriarchy on it. The look drew a lot of attention and praise, but only at first. Eventually, the vest drummed up a lot of controversy as Kara was accused of stealing the message from Luna Matatas, a queer woman of color who trademarked the phrase in 2015. In an Instagram post, Luna wrote, While I'm giddy that Peg the Patriarchy made it to the Met Gala, Kara Delvine tried to pull it off as their own. No credit to me, the creator and the owner of the trademark. Ironically, Luna said that she trademarked the phrase because she was concerned that people like Kara would co-opt her movement and that the supermodel would grossly misrepresent everything that the original term would stand for. According to Luna, the movement is about subversion. It's not sexual and it's not about men, which is exactly how Kara described it to Kiki Palmer when she was being interviewed. So when she posted the outfit on Instagram, her comment section filled up with people demanding that she credit the original designer, which she never ended up doing. Number Number seven, getting miscast 
on purpose. When movie critics pointed out that Lawrence was a little too young to be playing a single mom in American Hustle at the age of 23, and then playing 40 year old Joy in the movie Joy, she decided to laugh it off as a joke while appearing on Live with Kelly and Michael. She went on to say that David O. Russell is making a film and the plan so far is to have her play the mother of Bob De Niro. Star then went on to say, I think more people that get mad and tell him I'm too young to be taking on these roles makes part of him think and say, yeah, just watch and see. Now this whole statement wouldn't have been such a big deal, but at the time Jennifer had just come out against sexism in the industry. However, in this industry, ageism and sexism go hand in hand, especially when it comes to casting females in movies. At this time of the whole interview, upset the fans because Jennifer didn't even seem phased by her action. Hopefully by the time she turns 50, she can see why this was such a huge issue at the time and understands why many were so upset. Number Six. She talks a lot of smack about a lot of stars. In 2016, Jennifer appeared on Watch What Happened Live with Andy Cohen. During the show, she and her best friend Laura Sampson engaged in a game called Shush You BFF Flush. In this game, Lawrence would be asked a series of questions where she had to dish the tea on the meanest things she has ever said about any celebrity without actually revealing who that celebrity is. The star went on to say a lot of nicknames for certain celebrities. She said, there's the lady, there's Pickle. And her best friend Laura went on to add that the lady has different variations. Raging lady, the lady in red, the lady in waiting. The whole ordeal was just outrageous as the two went on to talk because Jennifer and best friend sounded like they have a whole lot of issues with other female stars. Number five, David O. Russell. It's no secret Jennifer loves working with David O. Russell because he's given the star some iconic roles where she's been able to break the age barrier and and try something new. Lawrence loves David so much, she actually tears up whenever she talks about him. Many have pointed out that's probably because she has a better relationship with him than most actors do. However, David has a long track record of being aggressive with his castmates and crew. The New York Daily News report leaked Sony's executive emails, which showed an altercation between David O. Russell and co-star Amy Adams. The messages were so concerning that co-star Christian Bale had to stay step in and intervene. However, this isn't the only time Russell has overstepped his boundaries with another actor. As George Clooney once claimed he got into an altercation with the filmmaker after he was aggressive with his castmates and crew on the 2009 set Three Kings. A video has also since surfaced of an altercation where you can see Russell screaming at actress Lily Tomlin while filming the 2004 Hart Huckabee's film. Russell's bad behavior and Jennifer's support for the filmmaker is definitely concerning Learning. However, he isn't the only controversial director Lawrence has deep affection for as back in 2014, she told Vanity Fair that she worshipped Woody Allen. Four. Racially insensitive. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Lawrence revealed that she and her best friend, Amy Schumer, were working on a play together. She went on to say that the film was less than promising. She said that she and Amy played sisters and would go on a road trip to reconnect with their brother. She then said there was a twist and laughed about it being very hilarious and that it was incredibly offensive. The star then went on to say she made a tagline that she wanted to put on the movie's post and it said minorities will be offended and so will all white people. There's definitely other ways to be funny than to be racist and if you think a joke might just hurt someone, probably shouldn't say it. Unfortunately for the situation of Jennifer's shadiness and Amy's shocking and often tasteless jokes, Jennifer definitely wasn't exaggerating with her descriptions. Number three, stealing shirt designs. In 2015, the owner of Other Wild Design Studio, Rachel Burks, started selling feminist t-shirts with the slogan that was created in the 70s. She was doing it ethically and as a collaboration with the original designer. The t-shirts said, the future is female, and they were an instant hit. But when Kara got her hands on them and posted the shirts on Instagram, they 
really blew up because of her huge following. The British model saw a pretty good business opportunity and announced that she was going to be making and selling her own version of the shirt and giving some of the proceeds to charity. But fans were quick to point out that she hadn't designed this shirt and therefore it wasn't right to just sell it without crediting the original makers. And once other Wild Design Studio caught on, they accused Kara of stealing the idea from a small business. They argued about who had the right to print the slogan, but because Kara was on the receiving end of most of the backlash, she eventually caved and agreed to link the company's website in her posts about the t-shirt. Number two, Julia Fox comments. During an episode of their Forbidden Fruits podcast last year, Julia Fox and her co-host Nikki Takesh recounted a bizarre story of Kara being inappropriate towards Azalea Banks. The story goes that the two of them were at a party where the rapper was performing and when they noticed something weird, Nikki said, we look to the side of the stage and we see this person trying to keep pushing past security and we realized it was Cara Delvine. Julia then said that they realized very quickly that Cara was wasted and that after several attempts, she finally made her way up on stage while Azalea was performing and even stole the mic from her. Julia said that Cara's behavior was thirsty and she could tell by Azalea's face that she was over it and just wanted to have her moment. It was a funny story that lines up very well with the video of Cara trying to lick Azalea's leg on stage, but it's probably just the way they party together considering that the two of them are close friends. And coming in at number one, the awkward interview. In the middle of a promotional tour for her film Paper Towns, Cara appeared on Good Day Sacramento and it was a complete disaster from start to finish. First of all, the anchors called her Carla instead of Cara, then they asked her whether or not she had read the book on which the film is based and why she didn't seem more excited to be on the show despite making millions from the movie. In all fairness, Cara really didn't seem too enthusiastic when it came to promoting the film and she eventually refused to respond to their questions. She really wasn't giving them anything to work with at all except for quite a bad attitude. But it didn't really help that one of the anchors straight up told her, we'll let you take a little nap and maybe get a Red Bull, essentially kicking her off the program. Although there is still a debate to this day about what made the interview so uncomfortable to watch, it is certainly one for the books. Oh, 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 oh,